So we've heard that this is an offer of a peace treaty, if that's necessary. If you've heard anything about nine, peace treaties work as it's a valuable peace. Something you get something in return, they're just being tolerated in a state where you should be allowed to practice your religion. We have three points. A, that we can the position of those majority, minority leaders, that's bad, because they have a moderating effect. Second, that visibility and partial fulfillment of these symbols is extremely important for you to express yourself in society, to also reclaim some part of the public space to feel welcome at home, and thereby improve the situation of yourself and the interaction with the majority of the society. And lastly, because we believe that religion becomes less scary if it's in public space by more mid-moderate people in active, and how that will work. A little bit of rebuttal before that. So we hear this idea of fear of losing cultural homogeneity. Note that all of those cultural values are constructed. And you as a state have not always been Christian. Sweden managed to go from some vague pagan thing towards Christianity to some odd shape of agnosticism that aren't properly defined. What you can see is that in a lot of countries, people go through religious changes by the way population changes, by new countries, new ethnic groups coming in, presenting their religion. Some of them will be accepted, some partially influence the culture, and that's usually a very organic process that helps and that works. As you can also see, look in Germany in parts of Berlin, like Neukölln and Kreuzberg, where people are actively engaging with those minority ideas. That happens first on an elite level, but then spreads out to a larger part of society. We think that's beneficial, and there's no inherent reason why they would be incapable. Even if they were, if their characterization is you can't be a proper Muslim and a French person, then that's terrible if we want to live in a state where there are French Muslims. If we want to be accepted, if we want those people to interact in society, then you can't build up this bipolar model of saying you have to choose either or. Because that means that some people would choose to be either completely French and therefore rejected from their home community, or choose to be completely Muslim, therefore rejected by the mass majority of the French population. Placing that burden upon the minority radicalizes them, makes them feel alien in the country they live in, therefore engage less in the social process. We think that's terrible. That's particularly true because we already proved to you, if you only want someone to blame, then your ethnicity, looking different, is often already sufficient, and we hear very, very little claims for why just having religious practice changes that. So first point, why are minority leaders such a good actor to do so? We often think they have a certain moderating effect. If you care particularly strong about religion and scripture, there's a big problem because those scriptures are very, very old. They're years back. They're from a different country, often in a different region, and they're often in different situations, namely at times where those people are the majority and were created. That means you often need a moderating effect of religious leaders who know the situation they're in, who in context often with other religious leaders, as you can see in a lot of cases, and therefore able to interpret them and help people to interpret those laws. Why is it bad if there are no weaken in those interactions? Because what we can see is that if you publicly announce don't practice your religion as much as you should, as you feel like wanting to do, at least for those people who are particularly extreme, who care very, very strong about religion, they'll feel like you're betraying their religion, the original idea of scripture and the way you're supposed to interact. That means less part of those groups are willing to engage in that group, you have more of a fragmentation of that group, but it also means partly open rebellion within those groups of extreme leaders saying those people are mistreating our religion, shouldn't we fight back to reclaim it? That's bad. Second idea why visibility there. So they say something like religion is nothing about symbols. That seems very odd. Even their food box example is bad because it means that unless I've prepared my meal, I'm not able to spontaneously join someone for a group session because we have a spontaneous meeting. That means all of a sudden I have less chance to interact. That's particularly true if they extend it to prayer rooms. If you have a prayer room in a school, you can say I have to pray for 10 minutes now, later I'll join you immediately, compared to I have to go home now to pray, I have to withdraw to my private sphere, I have no way in the public space of expressing myself because I've ordered, been ordered not to do so, and therefore have less integration with the regular population. Maybe that's bad because it makes you feel uncomfortable, but it also makes other people feel uncomfortable. Why is that so? Okay, let's go into the de uh, details. So first of all, they talk about the acceptance and visibility. That's a big issue. But what does it happen to those people in real life? You only talk about minorities, that means crosses might still be visible. Very religious symbols, church bells, whatever, are still there. Whenever you enter the public space, you feel that this public space belongs to a specific majority group, which is not yours, and just not particularly caring much about your feelings, because they're openly expressing them, whereas your leader tells you, you shouldn't. Why is that bad? Because you don't trust the public space that belongs to yourself and as your own. If you can contribute to your public space, either through your clothing, through church bells, to shaping the way rooms are constructed in public buildings, it means it's partly your own. That means you integrate more into it, you have a higher feeling of belonging and adherence to that group, you care for more, more for it, and then you're also more likely to develop, say, patriotic feeling, regional feelings, any form of feelings that makes you adhere to that group. 
Second of all, you feel less out of context. If you, for example, a first generation migrant, you might feel more at home if at least some areas, some members and characteristics of home are there in the new home, which makes it easier to integrate later on. And thirdly, you're more comfortable by not having to constantly reflect, am I too open in the display of my religion? Do I have to constantly self-censor myself in the way I speak, in the way I dress? We think that's detrimental because if we have this constant awareness of how we act and if we should change our behavior, that means that we self-censor, we feel uncomfortable. How do people react when they're uncomfortable? They're not particularly nice to talk to in the first place, and they're not particularly good advocates. They often feel either very rejecting of conversations, of exploring their identity religion, or they become extremely defensive or aggressive when they are indeed questioned about their ethnicity, their background, because they don't feel as much welcome in this home as we would like them to be. <coughs> We want the evolution of differences. Wearing a symbol means you propagate something. Usually a country that is not France, but Israel if you're Jewish, or some Islam country if you're wearing those kind of symbols. This is the status quo. It's how majority perceives it. Right. And majority perception changes if the society surrounding it changes. The whole idea that every time I symbolize something is an aggressive act is completely constructed. And we think that the majority doesn't even perceive it that way. So why is that true? Because religion becomes less scary if it's more public, we believe. So that's why often areas with a higher degree of Muslims, for example, in Berlin, tend to be more open. Why is that the case in particular? Because if you tell those people, do not do this, we already explained to you, the most extreme people are probably going to say, I'm sticking with scripture, I'm sticking with the traditional interpretation, I'm going out. Those people are scary. Religious people are not scary contrary to what they believe. Scary people are scary. If you have extremist people going out there and being connected to religious symbols, then you connect those bad people, extremist people, radicals to those symbols, and that's exactly what the media part picks up, as they rightfully point out. If you encourage them, as we want to do in opposition, that means moderates go out, show their symbols in a friendly public sphere. That means possibly being a comfortable in the way they do, but also being more willing to explain what they're doing. If I have a friendly moderate person, I can A, see that the way they perceive re a religion is not as extreme as media tells me, but I can also see that those people are often friendly and more willing to explain what religion means to me giving me a positive first grasp of that religion, higher acceptance of a slow transition in society. That's what we want to achieve, therefore please support.